Jackson Radio Show. Welcome everybody, Kevin Jackson here. President Trump was out of sight. That's not the old 1970s black version. Like He's out of sight, man. I'm talking about he was out of sight. He disappeared. Welcome everybody. KJRadio.com so you can find out more about us. 844-551-8255. The left are losing their minds. They got their butts kicked. They played chicken. President Trump drove his tank <laughs> right down the road as they were in their little smart car. And guess what they did? <laughs> they did what they were supposed to do. They veered, totally left, <laughs> and ran off the road, derailed. And President Trump just kept driving the tank. <laughs> in fact, he wasn't even looking. Oh, man, talk about getting your butt kicked. But it isn't just the butt kicking that bothers the left. Because they caved, as you guys know, they caved and said, OK, we're going to fund the government through February the 8th and we'll regroup. And that's all you're hearing them talk about. We will regroup and we will come back and we're going to be stronger than ever. Stronger together. <laughs> Wasn't that Hillary's slogan? Stronger together. <laughs> really? <laughs> oh, I don't know why that makes me chuckle, but the left, we're stronger together. <laughs> A bunch of little metrosexual pansies. Woo, look how tough we are. You better not mess with us, man. We'll call Antifa. <laughs> We'll go get Black Lives Matter. <laughs> Trump's like, go get him. Go get him. Hey, hey, I'll be here all day. I'm here all day. <laughs> Man, he whooped that butt. Uh, so, so here's the thing. Donald Trump took what they call a hands-off approach to negotiations. Now, let me explain what that means. <laughs> what that means is it's very simple. Donald Trump called the, the Democrats over and said, hey, you guys want to meet? Let's talk about DACA. And he called his meeting. I wrote about this. I said, look, this is brilliant. He's not running from the problem. He's not saying, I'll wait on them to call me. There was no ego. Trump says, hey, come on over, Feinstein and Feinstein, whatever. Bring everybody, let's all get together. So Durbin and all these people came together. He brought over some Republicans and said, okay, let's see if we can work this out. They didn't work it out. So then Lindsey Graham and Durbin get together and come up with this plan that stunk. It was never going to pass. They, and then they act as if they were, it was a bipartisan meeting. There's nothing bipartisan when Lindsey Graham's involved. Lindsey Graham is a rhino. I mean, for all intents and purposes, he should just declare himself to be a Democrat chick and move over to that party. Start wearing dresses and, you know, fight for the LGBT community. Because he is nothing more than a Republican eunuch, a rhino. Go, Lindsey. You got the name. <laughs> so... He and, and, and Durbin get together and say, we presented this bill and the president was all, and, and Schumer says he was all for it. That's a lie. That That's the biggest lie. That's one of those obvious lies. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, you know, so like when I ran against Usain Bolt in the Olympics back in, a, you know, like 2016 um, and I beat him. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, come on. So obvious. Donald Trump's going to accept your immigration plan with without his border wall uh getting rid of the the visa program getting rid of the the chain migration all the things that are that are near and dear to his heart because he doesn't keep his promises we all know donald trump doesn't keep his promises so the left tried to sell a lie they've forgotten man we don't believe them anymore we don't believe their media we don't believe their politicians but they thought we could get this lie through well it's got lindsey graham on it that'll do it so we call foul, call BS. And and so Donald Trump says, look, you're not bringing me a legitimate plan. Get out. He then calls Chuck Schumer over again. He says, Chuck, you want to work on this thing because you got no you got no leverage, dude. You're going to fight against the American people and the military in order to support illegals. I'll go to battle with you on this from a marketing perspective. Schumer shut down. Well, I tell you what, Mr. Trump, I'll call it the Trump shutdown. Go for it, Chuck. Call it Trump shutdown. Let's see who trends. Let's see who blinks. So Donald Trump cut off all negotiations. See, there's a point in the negotiation. And I'm going to explain to you guys. When you're doing sales and you're at an impasse with your client, you've got a good product. The client wants that product. They do. They want, they, you know, it's not like you're, you got, they don't accept the meeting unless they want the product. 
The only thing that's that's a problem is they may not like your price or the time of delivery or whatever. But there you're you're at the table. But there comes a point where you reach an impasse, and in a negotiation, you say to yourself, "If and, and I'm going to tell you how proper negotiation technique." You make the comment, you say to yourself, this is all I'm willing to go. This is the distance I'm willing to go. And you negotiate up to that point, iteratively, slowly. So Donald Trump essentially laid out where he was, etc. He knows he's in a, it's it. My product is the best product. You can't get my product anywhere else. But I'm willing to go, you know, a certain distance. So you feel like you got a good deal. That's the thing of a negotiation. Everybody needs to feel good about it. But then there comes a point when you have the best product and you've got the negotiation strength. You say, you know what I'm going to do? I'm just going to take my product and I'm going to leave. I don't know if you've ever had this opportunity to do this in sales where you know you're in the driver's seat, but you really want to work with the client. Maybe it's a good client, somebody you've worked with over the years. You're trying to help them, but you got to remember you got a job to do. And what you do today... (laughs) has far-reaching implications of what's going to happen tomorrow. If you do the wrong thing, your client you will know, I can take advantage of this person in the next negotiation. So you're not just negotiating for now. You're negotiating for later. And when you say to a person, you know what, Bill? I don't think we're going to be able to make a deal today. So why don't we both just regroup, and I'm going to take my, my product, my service, whatever, and I'm going to go, and we'll reconvene. And you leave and Bill's going, but I need the product. And you're going, you're thinking to yourself as you're walking out, I know you need the product, but you're not getting it today. And then Bill starts ringing your phone. Hey man, listen, uh, you know, when can you get back over? And you just pretend that you don't see his name on caller ID. And you do that for a few days. And you know what Bill does? He finally begs you to come back. Listen, uh, if you don't mind, man, I'd really like us to meet again. And that's exactly what happened. Trump took his ball and went home. And they say, oh, no, no, no. That's not what he did. He was, he was, uh, you know, not, he checked out. Yeah, he, he didn't want to be part of the negotiation. Look what the Clezzers, you know, they, they were, he, he, uh, supposed to be Mr. Art of the Deal and he wasn't even there to be a deal maker. And I said this earlier, he made the best deal. The best deal is when you walk away and you know what happens? The guy deals himself. He's like, well, I mean, at this point, I guess we we better figure things out. That's what happened. Press Secretary Sarah Sarah Huckabee says, look, what the president did clearly worked. You can talk about he was non-existent. He didn't, you know, he was, I think they, what do they say? Hands off approach to the negotiation. Call it whatever you want. That's a, that. That's it. If, if you want to put the spin on it. Oh, he wasn't there. And so we finished. Into, yeah, he gave you an ultimatum. He took his deal and said, this is the deal. You take it or leave it. Now, the Democrats are spinning. Oh, this is what it is. Sarah went on to say this. There's this has been a big priority for the president. I think it certainly went much smoother than it has in the past, but also. The president was putting pressure and standing firm on exactly what he was willing to do and what he wasn't. And here's what's cool about it. It was a three day shutdown, one of the shortest in history the, the Democrats wanted to make a point that under Trump, we shut down the government backfire point. If that if that makes you sleep better at night, that we we got him. Well, good for you. This article goes on to say this Trump shifting positions, particularly on protections for young immigrants, twice scuttled deals that could have been that could have avoided the shutdown, frustrating Republicans and Democrats alike. That is one of the biggest lies you could ever. First of all, he doesn't have a shifting position. Donald Trump's position on DACA is we have to look at this situation because these kids matter. And, And every Republican, I don't care if you're a conservative or not. You understand what it would be like to be a two year old, move to a new country. You know nothing about your old country. You'd grow up here, speak the language, etc. And suddenly you find out you're an illegal. We can all understand that. Now, that doesn't mean you get citizenship and all that, but we can deal with President Trump doing that. The left pretends that he doesn't want to deal with that. And so they claim that they had a deal going and all this. That was a lie. And I love how they put this. The White House refused to engage in negotiations over the weekend, said Schumer. The great deal-making president sat on the sidelines. 
That is a guy, that is a loser who's trying to look for anything. Throw me a lifeline and make people think that I'm really something special. This one, this article says he chafed at remaining out of the fray, grousing to aides and outside advisors that he feared taking the blame. Who wrote this? This is like one of these frontier novels like, you know, he was so fast that flies, he could shoot a fly's wings all flapping in the middle of the sky, you know, from a thousand miles away. This is nonsense. Trump doesn't blink. He knows his negotiation tactics. And you know what's so cool about this from our perspective? He knows it's so cold. It is. It's like it, it literally is taking candy from a baby. More to come, folks. Keep it in. Kevin Jackson on the Black Sphere Radio Network. Do you owe back taxes to the IRS or state? The secret to avoiding the IRS nightmare is to seek professional representation. My friends at Security Tax Associates provide the most cost-effective and ethical representation in the industry while helping to avoid seizures, levies, and wage garnishments. Security Tax Associates is here to ensure that the appropriate steps are taken to permanently eliminate any possibility of future tax burdens once and for all. For a free, no-obligation consultation, contact Security Tax Associates, 844-779-4177. That's 844-779-4177. 844-779-4177. Or visit them at securitytaxassociates.com.